everyone we are live at five here at broadway.com it is what is it wednesday it's wednesday it's hump wednesday day. it's hump day february 27th i'm paul Wontorek. and i'm ryan lee gilbert and we are joined by caitlin moynihan hello and a real broadway star mr yes. jim walton jim is here walton, come yes away. he's now back on broadway and come from away i mm -hmm. believe it's his 13th Broadway show. That's that that's sounds, how that's, that sounds I, right. I, I can it's count up there. That's yeah. what I counted up to. Uh, there's a lot to talk to him about, but first, today's top five. This new musical is turning back time, and no, I'm not talking about the share show. I was gonna say. Oh, I, yeah, exactly. No, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Do you remember this movie? I do. do you, were you not? It was a lot. I remember it, is it was a, very, a lot. I remember it being like four hours. I think I remember yeah. really loving this movie, though. Yeah. 2008, David Tear Fincher. Jerker. Tear Jerker, based off of an F. Scott Fitzgerald story. It's about a man who is born as an old man, and then his life, he becomes younger and younger, backwards, all that. Brad Pitt, Kate Blanchett, beautiful. So a new musical has been based on this, on this story. It will have its world premiere production in London at the Southwark Playhouse. Um, the book is written by Jethro Compton, who wrote Wolf's Blood, and uh, it features music, lyrics, and music direction by Darren Clark um, of The Wicker Husband. Um, this will happen May 15th through June 8th. Um, casting and more information about the show are to come, but it's a pretty big project. I wonder how they're going to do it. I know, exactly. Like Can it's, I mean, with David Fincher and Brad Pitt, he had, you know, all of the technology at his yeah. disposal to turn him into like yeah. really hot Brad Pitt. And, <laughs> but, and then like a weird baby, but all that. But yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it on stage. If they'll we'll if Maybe they'll cast it like the share show, three different versions. Sure. Ooh. Puppets. Puppets. Pu I'm into puppetry. <laughs> Shadow puppetry. <laughs> And now you have even more time to catch this acclaimed off-Broadway play. Bozeman and Lena is mm -hmm. Ethel Fugard's classic. It's one, one of his yeah. classics. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, is extended at the Signature Theater off-Broadway. This is directed by Yael, Yael Farber. Mm -hmm. I have difficult Nailed names to say Nailed today. Yeah, the, yes. I've Nailed been it. tasked. <laughs> you, you really, I, whenever I see the, our script, I'm always like, it's really more Ryan territory. Well, yes, I, Ryan I, is I very international it. and great <laughs> with names. Uh, anyway, this this it, it stars uh, Sangawa, Sangawa, Sangawa yep. who you mm -hmm. loved in Fela. Fela. Yes. And you'll Fela. get to see him again. And he's going to be in Moulin Rouge, soon. you guys. And he's yes, so good. He's Toulouse the track. And yeah. it's like, it's going to be a big summer thing. But right now, he is in uh, in this play, which is now running through March 24th. And Zainab Za, what do we know her from? Eclipse, right. I believe. Yes. Yes. She, was she was absolutely incredible. In that. And Thomas Silcott. Okay. Nailed it. <laughs> a little less preparation for that one. Uh, anyway, it centers on the struggles of the abusive Bozeman and the long-suffering wife, Lena, and they kind of a stranger, mm. played by Thomas Silcott, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, I while wandering so. the South African wastelands. It's at the Signature Center, the Persian Square Signature Center. Uh, it's a big hit. I'll go go check it out. out. A new exhibit is being made to honor this theater legend. Yes, if you were not satisfied by 2017's Prince of Broadway, you're going to have so much more Harold Prince in your life. The New York Public Library for the Performing Arts at Lincoln Center has announced plans for an exhibition examining Hal Prince and all of his work. It will open this fall. Um, it will document Prince's career from his early days serving as a stage manager and an understudy in Wonderful Town to his later collaborations on literally everything you know. <laughs> Fiddler, Cabaret, Phantom, West Side Story, Evita, Sweeney Todd, Parade, Candide, Company, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Yes. It goes on and on and on. And, and on by the way, on. including Listen. casting Jim Walton as Franklin Shepard. Of course, Shepard. absolutely, well to bring saying. it back into the room. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the exhibition will include original costumes, set models, scenic designs, archival video, and so much more. The display will open in September of 2019 and it will run through February 2020. I feel like you just announced a new Broadway musical, but it's actually a library exhibition. It's just a library <laughs> exhibition, but it's about that. Hal That's Prince. exciting. We so love libraries. Super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> we love Hal. Yes. And it's time to go back to school. 
If you want to be if you, if you a Lin be Manuel Miranda style absolutely. rapper, Freestyle yes. Love Supreme is launching an academy. Ooh. <laughs> of course. <they're>. Absolutely. <laughs> because yeah. you can't go a week without Lin Manuel Miranda no. having no. a new project. No, it is. No. Um, so, of course, Freestyle Love Supreme is happening off Broadway right now at the Greenwich mm-hmm. House Theater. Mm-hmm. And this is this is sort of like where Lin, Lin Manuel Miranda got. Um, yeah, sort like of cut his, start. his teeth I mean, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. His OG. Yeah. Homies, absolutely. Yes. Not, I'm not going to the here. academy. <laughs> I will not do well gonna, in the no. academy. <laughs> it was co-founded by Lynn and Tommy Kale. Uh, it's an eight-week course. Oh, we should, maybe we should do this. Oh, should be a video we should series. All sign up for this. This should be a video yeah. series. Yeah. It'd Get be a disaster. Bread. An eight-week course uh, begins March 17th and 18th. Uh, right. Applications can be found on the site. I don't know which site. Uh, you can link on our site. Our site. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Broadway.com. <laughs> Sign up. <laughs> and a new musical is having some readings in the New York City. Yes, absolutely. Off Broadway's York Theater Company has announced a pair of readings of Monet. This is a new musical inspired by the life of artist Claude Monet. You may know Monet from the it's the water lily paintings. I know Monet bought. from the is it Mean Girls or Clula? Clula. She's a total Monet. Yes, um, she's a Monet. <laughs> she's a total Monet. Oh, we're like close up. It's a mess, but far, far away, away it's she's beautiful. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. That's how I know Monet. That's the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the original Monet was talking about flowers. Um, but anyway, this um, is it, it is his story. It features a book by Joan Ross Sorkin and a score by Carmel Owen. Alan Paul will direct. Um, this will take place March 8th at two times. You can see it at 2.30 and at 7 p.m. because it is open to the public. Who's in it? Did you, you say that? Alexandra Silber. Isn't it? Who we absolutely love. You may know her, of course, from Masterclass or Fiddler on the Roof. Um, Ken Clark from The Great Comet will also be participating in the reading. Um, super exciting. It tells all of his whole story and the life and price he ultimately paid for his art. He didn't cut mm. his ear off. That he did not cut his ear off. Different but, I, but I'm pretty sure he like lost two wives. His oldest son died. He Ooh. got cataracts, all sorts of things. I think he died from lung cancer. Monet oh, had a like, very tragic I life. love that you knew that. Yes. Well, um, you know. <laughs> also on the site, photos from Alice by Heart. Alice so by Heart open. Broken Sheik's new musical, Stephen Sater, over yeah. at the brand new the MCC Theater. Brand new theater. To, yeah. And I can't even remember the name off the top of my head because it's so brand but new. But I love the yes. idea of a brand new clean it's theater. It smells mm. like a new theater. Sure. Yes. Brand new, that brand new theater smell, yeah. Okay, Ryan, thank yes. you for joining us. My it's pleasure. time to welcome Mr. Jim Walton. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Gladly, yes. We have Jim Walton here with us in the studio to celebrate Come From Away's upcoming second anniversary on the Broadway. As we said before, this marks his 13th Broadway show. Um, his other credits include Merrily We Roll Along, Sweeney Todd, The Music Man, Guys and Dolls, Bye Bye Birdie, and a whole lot more. Uh, make sure to follow the show at We Come From from away to stay up to date on all things Jim Walton and come from away. Please leave all of your questions in the comments below and please welcome Jim and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. <laughs> I like to thank her. Yeah, uh, how you doing, Jim? I'm doing very well, thanks. Yeah. Happy to be here. I'm going to try to uh, temper my... Uh, I, I'm a huge Merrily freak, so I'm going to oh, well. give it to you in like small doses. I'm not That's going to good. overwhelm don't, you with it. Yeah, don't hurt yourself. It's, <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> I'm a huge Merrily fan. I mean, the score, you know, it's yeah. just... Yeah, uh, I mean, how could you know? Ugh, we'll cool. get to that. I want to talk about Come From Away. I haven't seen oh. you Come From Away yet. Well, that's it's all right. It's a big Broadway hit. Sure is. When did you first see it? Did you see uh, the original you, you cast know, do it? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't see it, uh, shame on me, until uh, I got an audition for it. Okay. Well, it was that's hard to get reason. a ticket. You know, you couldn't... I mean, you could, yeah. um, but you paid for it, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't right. working, yeah. and uh, it's that same old story. Uh, but I, I got an audition for it. I think it was late August of okay. 2018. So right. I thought, well, I'm now I'm going to go see it. So I went to see it. So what was it like uh, experiencing as an audience member? What you, what'd you oh. think of watching? It's such a tight ensemble, oh. right? I mean, they were what they were doing up there, I feel like might be slightly intimidating as an actor oh. to enter into that machine. <laughs> yeah. I could go into the, yeah, all that I experienced after I booked it. Okay. <laughs> right. In total panic. Yeah. I went, hey, I got the part. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did. I went into, like, uh, it's. I won't go into it because it's, it's silliness, but I, it made me very nervous. Uh-huh. But when I first saw it, I remember thinking, well, oh, Jen is the pilot again. Jen Colella, yeah. and w- I didn't see her change. And I'm right. like, oh, it's all, the- it's deceptive. We're watching the action. And then I purposefully watched her after she was the pilot. She went upsta- 
stage. She, it was dark. She slipped her coat off. Somebody took it, and I went, oh, okay. They all, they're working together. Wow. Meaning it's staged beautifully. Well, one best direct. One yeah, best Chris, Christopher yeah. Ashley won yeah, the, uh, the Tony for it. So. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, exciting to see, uh, to maybe be a part of such an ensemble piece. And then when I booked it, it was exciting, and I was excited and scared. So it was... Uh, uh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's great. The people, the, the cast is just so lovely, and the, and the band, the crew, every, everything about it. They're just great people. So I'm very lucky. That's awesome. Uh, so you're playing Nick and Doug, mm -hmm. right? And so is it Nick? Nick is the the Brit, the British man who right. rolls for the the woman from well, Dallas. It's a sweet little romance <laughs> yes. in the middle of Comfortable Way. I remember when I first saw it, I didn't expect that. I wasn't ready for that. And it's very, it's a sweet and it's a true story. You know, I've story. met and they're still together. They right? are. They got married. I wanted to say it very carefully. I don't <laughs> yes. know if anything's happened since opening night. <laughs> yeah, well, no, they they are together, and I met them on uh, Skype. Conversation. Oh wow! Okay. Early on, they found me. Wow. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's also that there's the family around come from away of the yes, original I know. people who went to Gander and like Nick and Diane who married and they're lovely and so yeah. kind and they're my Facebook friends. You know, so it, it's a, that's amazing. It's a a different experience. That is than, weird. Uh, that's a diff that is a different experience. It's not it, like doing Sweeney Todd or something. No, well, we didn't have the internet the then. Uh, that's the odd thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, so what is it like now that you're up up in there and 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 you oh, see? I perfect. mean, audiences are. What, what do you, let's talk about the power of this show mm. because um, I wondered when it first started. You know, they they they're, they're very clear about it's the nine twelve musical. I remember there was a lot of talk about that. Don't call it the nine eleven musical. Right. It's really just a musical about what human interactions and what do you think people are really responding to and why has it become at being a Broadway pro like you are. Why has this become the sensation that it genuinely is? Well, it's a universal 9-11. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll call it 9-11 and 9-12 yeah. probably while we're talking. Yeah. It, it was an extremely traumatic national emergency disaster that marked a lot of people, whether they were in New York City or Washington or Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Yeah. It marked everyone because we shared it on television. And, um, and to have a musical uh, come out that allows you to relive it and maybe to um, let go of some of that. I mm. think it's cleansing or yeah. it's almost redemptive as far as uh, humanity. And mm. at a time when America, in my opinion right now, is it, it needs a feel-good musical about the goodness of, mm -hmm. of humanity. And mm -hmm. that's what I believe Come From Way really is about. Um, so I think that's partly why it's so popular. Also, it's expertly written and yeah. beautiful music and the stage and the characters. It's also very funny. And mm -hmm. We forget that, but you see the show, there, there's this one 10-minute section where it's just laugh after laugh after laugh, but they're from character. It's, they're not yeah. jokes. They're right. from character and situation. Yeah. It's really well done. So I sit on stage and admire the craft of it. <laughs> yeah. One of, my, one of my biggest memories of being in New York after 9-11 was how nice people were to each other mm. on the streets. Mm. Yeah. And it was suddenly like something sort of lifted and people yeah. were just interacting with each other differently. Sure. Well, we were walking and wounded. I feel like yeah. this musical is really honoring that. That's what it, yes, kind of what it exactly. honors to me. That. Very good point. You said it exactly. I, I say that to people on the line. I, I meet people outside the autograph line. Or, yeah. And uh, some of them will say, the New Yorkers will say, this reminds me of the way New York was for a few days or weeks after it. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's true. It's it's really much needed. In case you haven't watched MSNBC or Fox News or CNN <laughs> lately, it's good to have something. Like this. Yes. Yeah. So, how does it feel to be a Broadway vet? A thir thirteen year, thirteen shows. Uh, how how does it feel to be that guy? I don't. I, I it, it's it embarrasses me to say thirteen. Not not because of superstition with a number. I don't know. It just I would never would have thought when I moved here. 40 years ago, by the way, this wow. month. I moved to oh, New York City 40 years ago. Thank you. February of 1979. Wow. Drove a U-Haul truck with like a lamp and a shoebox in it. I don't know why I got oh. a truck. I thought I was going to have more things. <laughs> uh, but uh, I never would have thought I would do 13 shows, yeah. um, Broadway shows. Right. Uh, of course, two of them ran for two weeks each and right. another one ran for three months so you know they they weren't all come from away come from away is is one of a kind for me isn't so it interesting they, how shows run longer nowadays yeah they I mean, either do or they don't it's yeah. kind of yeah 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 it's, i feel like there's there's more of a middle thing now that mm -hmm. happens and which is which is great yeah which is great for employment 
right? It's a wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be employed. They give you money. Like on <laughs> every Thursday, they give you a, a check. It's, I don't know. It's so weird. let's talk about Merrily a little bit, Humor Me. Um, I love this show. It's one of my favorite scores. Obviously, it's back off Broadway right now. It mm -hmm. is one of these shows that people keep trying to fix or keep trying to, including Mr. Sondheim. I mean, it's, it's a constant sort of journey of working on this show. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting for me because I love the version you did. I actually really love the the original. Did you actually see it? I didn't see it. Because I, you're I'm not going to pretend like I saw it. You but I've done my research and I know the cast album by heart. Sure. And I've seen many other versions since. Mm -hmm. But it's so. Wh how did? What does it feel like for you to see how people are like obsessed with this show? Oh, I love it because it it was a huge part of my career. It was my second Broadway show, yeah. and it. it basically got me a lot of attention that was, you know, I'm not going to say it was difficult, but because it was, uh, didn't run, it was a kind of a sad attention to get at times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I almost felt like a survivor of sorts. Um, and even the actual creating of it was stressful because you were a replacement in the role. Yes, I was in the ensemble. Oh, well, I played uh, hit Jerome, his attorney, his yeah. lawyer, Jerome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was how I was cast. And uh -huh. I wasn't the understudy for Frank Shepard. A lot of people think, oh, well, you were the understudy, so you inherit. No. Wow. It just it played out oddly how it did, uh, so it was it was um, a lot of work, but uh, I loved the show. Uh, so I'm but I'm very pleased to see when I meet people who are obsessed with Merrily, or and I I haven't seen this uh, revival, the Fiasco mm -hmm. uh, Company's, right. uh, but I've heard wonderful things about it, and in fact from uh, original Merrily we roll along cast members who really. Love. The oh, they're production. paying the stamp of approval on. Yes, it. it's it's getting the stamp of approval from yeah. some originals. Right. So, that says a lot, and um, I sadly don't think I'll be able to see it. But it must be strange because you have a job. It must be strange to have a, like a few months of your life from the early '80s. Like you yeah. know that that's what's so interesting about it. Like it wasn't you weren't actually in that world for very long. Yeah, three months. But it lives on. Yeah. It's it was September, bizarre. October, November. That's showbiz. Right? Yeah, it was like after Labor Day we started and we were done on November 30th <laughs> right. or 29th whenever we recorded it. Uh, yeah. It was the 30th. Yeah. So, like, and people haven't stopped talking about it. Yeah. Well, the music is it's just a glorious score. Yeah. I mean, it's so inventive and tuneful, clever, heartbreaking, funny. Yeah. Uh, and these young kids, you know, we were all just belting it out. There's yeah. some, there's something to that. Yeah. I mean, I hear it, and certain tracks of mine, I think, oh, why did I sing it like that? I would, I would totally do it different uh -huh. if I could. But then I, voice always says, Jim, that's what they wanted. They wanted raw youth singing <laughs> out, yeah. and with abandon. That's what we did the day yeah. after we closed. Yeah. So it's, it means a lot that you and others love the show. Yeah, I'm gonna go listen to it all night tonight. <laughs> Uh, thanks for that. What, what other what other shows did you really love? I mean, you have a lot of credits. Is there anything that sort of like jumps out as like a really amazing experience? Or gosh, there were so I'm so lucky. The Sweeney Todd revival at Circle in the Square. Yeah, now that's yeah. old enough to remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that was that was great because I Sweeney Todd is one of my top three. Favorite. Teeny Todd was not that called it. Was, uh, yes, it was a, it was <laughs> a scale <laughs> down. Teeny Todd. Yeah, yeah. I, love I loved that production and. Uh, Oh, I don't know. I did a Music Man revival yep. in 2000, Susan Stroman's mm -hmm. revival. That was uh, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Great, great cast. I did a, maybe five shows with Roundabout, mm -hmm. which yeah. was terrific. Um, I, but Merrily kind of is marked as a, as a very important um, show. A 40 sec I did the original 42nd Street for a while. I was yeah, on the you, road with it. You played Billy in that? Billy Lawler. The, yeah. You, you the came tap in. dancing, t the Leroy Reams' role. Yeah, yeah. And I did the last year and a half or so of the run. Um, but that was a great show for me, too, because I, the singing and dancing, and it, it was demanding as a singer and a dancer. Yeah. So I kind of had to live clean. Yeah. And, and you were uh, a song and dance man. And, I, I, mean, I was. I kind you of fit into that? Is that sort of a natural place for that's you? That's kind of what I trained to be more yeah. than anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that, that was uh, a big, important show for me uh -huh. my trajectory right yeah um, i love it but uh, anyway you know i'm very blessed very lucky to have done 13 i can't believe it just it's uh it's i've been very lucky so i'm grateful it's amazing um what were you like when you got to new york with that u-haul what was that guy like <laughs> oh my goodness looks a lot like me right now i haven't yeah. changed <laughs> sure. I look pretty much the same sure. i don't know if the lighting is gonna uh help me uh i don't know i can remember it i uh 
I knew I loved the theater, and I didn't have an out. Uh, I didn't have a, an escape clause. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, and nothing against people who have it. I, God bless them, who say, I'll give it two years, and then if nothing happens, right. I'm going to go back to my hometown, and I'm going to get my master's and or whatever. I never, I, for better or worse, I came here thinking, well, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it somehow, or I'm going to build a life in New York City in the theater in whatever way. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe I was naive, or maybe I was just uh, committed to, to make it. Mm -hmm. um, I was excited. I was excited. I'm going to say it again. Excited and scared. <laughs> uh, my father, God rest him, didn't really kick me out of the house, but after I graduated, I, was, I went back home for a while. And I was just kind of there. And he kept saying, when are you going to New York? When are you moving to New York? Wow. And then finally he said, you're moving to New York. <laughs> you're moving, you know, he's a very kind man. So I realized, oh, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm not uh, processing some fears I have or mm -hmm. insecurities I have about whether I'm going to make it. Or uh, So I knew I had to do it at some point. And so uh, I think I was excited and scared, but committed as hell to Make I a love life. it. Yeah. I'm glad you came. I'm Me glad God too. kicked you out. And now I'm here. Now I can retire. I've done this. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, hey, Caitlin, yes. what are the people saying online? Yes. So, so Jen wants to know what it's what is it like being in Come From Away on Broadway while your niece is on the tour? Oh Come my From goodness. Away. Yes, shame on me for not even mentioning. That's fantastic. My niece Emily Walton is playing Janice Mosher, um, and, and assorted roles in the <laughs> the tour, as you just said. Mm -hmm. I think they're in Vegas or they're in Portland now. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, I'm just so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for me to book this is like, well, that's a great gig. What a great job. Mm -hmm. But for her to be doing it at the same time is uh, is kind of surreal. Mm -hmm. I was I've been hoping that either the man who plays Nick Doug in her production or Janice in our production takes a week off, and the producers say we're going to put the Waltons together yes. just for, yes. for, the Waltons for some together. publicity. Not that they need it, but <laughs> it's, my, it's a very selfish, for us. Yeah. very selfish <laughs> fantasy because uh, a lot of times I look at Alex who plays Janice so beautifully in our production. I think, gosh, that's that's what Emily is doing. Maybe right now, oh. it's uh, it's very sweet, and she's a super talent. Emily is just. Well, you'll know mm -hmm. when she's she's yet to really explode here. I think in this city. Great. So. Remember how funny you were in Sunset Boulevard? I just remember. <laughs> I was funny. It was ridiculous. Oh, I, I played that. Manfred. Well, Manfred. Yeah, well, he was a lot. I didn't think I was going to book that because I auditioned. You know, Lonnie said, "Do you want?" Lonnie Price said, yeah. "Do you want to audition?" And I said, "All right." Lonnie Price of Merrily We Roll Along. Yes, my yes. friend, and I thought, <laughs> well, all right, but Manfred is, as I would always say, he's extraordinarily gay. He's uh, he's a tailor, but just. And then I realized, you know what he really is? He's very happy. And so I... <laughs> well, that's that a definition was, of gay. Well, so I added, you know, I was a bit... I put on the characteristics, but I realized he's just so happy to be doing what he's doing. Yeah. And that made it work for me. So. It was fun to watch you do that. Well, was, thank you. I love the wig. Uh, I wore a wig. I don't yeah, know if you remember. No, it was a great yes, wig. I remember it. And it was just all, yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And Lonnie, dear friend, and yeah. it was a great thrill to be in that, in that show. Yeah, yeah. I what else, that. Caitlin? Yes. So Jackie wants to know, how do you get into the right like mindset and into your character before doing the show every night? Jackie, please call me. I need help. No, <laughs> I. Um, <laughs> I it's uh, I, I. I find that if I stretch physically, I need to stretch physically. Um, maybe it's back to my song and dance days. But once my body is stretched, I feel I feel relaxed. Then once I feel relaxed, I do try to find something. It sounds corny. Something uh, vulnerable, just uh, anything. If it's the thought of my daughter, who's now a grown woman living in Pal uh, Palo Alto, California, or someone I love, or a moment in time that makes me feel a little tender. I, mm. I, uh, it's just something that makes me feel mm -hmm. just a little vulnerable. That helps me, because otherwise, it's hard. The show is, is weird. You can be sitting uh, on a chair on stage for two minutes, and then, boom, you have to stand up and be committed and in touch right. with your feelings and talking to your right. partner. So you, I kind of have to keep, I, it's like I daydream through the entire show, mm -hmm. keeping loved ones near, or it's some, even sometimes it's something that amuses me, that keeping that close. So oh. it's, it's just finding my emotions is was what, what I, I do better if I can do that before I walk out on stage. Mm -hmm. cool. How's John Kalala? Ah, oh, 
I love Jen. That's like finding out how Who doesn't love Jen Chalala? How are you doing? I mean, she's, well, she's a super talent and maybe the most generous and kind people that I have ever yeah. worked with, but also really funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, can put me at, at ease on stage, mm -hmm. you know. I can look at her and she just kind of goes, hmm. <laughs> just does, and nobody can see it because we're in the dark, but you're kind of like, like suave or whatever, and we just we just kind of <laughs> giggle. And to me, that's part of it too. Like what Jackie was asking about is staying in the moment, yeah. like, mm. and not that we're goofing around, but it's we're staying connected and we're staying relaxed. And mm -hmm. that's she's 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 so good at it. That seems really important for this show to have the yeah. cast connect in that. Yeah, way. yeah. because yeah. it's on. You're not in the wings. Preparing for five minutes. Okay, I go on in a minute. Right. Let me just find my emotional center a little bit, and then I'll walk out. No, this is you're on stage all yeah. the time. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but it's it has its own unique challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. And this will be our last question. Aaron wants to know what is it like doing that chairography and moving all those chairs around all the time. Um, Aaron, I have a bruise on my left eye. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know I got it in the show, and I don't know what I ran into. <laughs> That's for starters. But uh, when I learned the show, this show was such that I would say it was very difficult to learn, but it's easier to do. Mm. Once you learn it, it's muscle memory, you yeah. know. Um, I also wrote down all my transitions, what I call transitions, like move chair seven to the red spikes or whatever it is. I have 17 of them in the show. Wow. 17 times I move a table and or chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's fine now, <laughs> uh, but, but it, was, it really scared me when I first went on. And, and also the spikes are there, but <clears throat> sometimes it's really dark and it's like, is that purple? You're looking down, is that a purple spike or brown? <laughs> And so you just kind of learn where they are over time. Yeah. But there still are transitions where I have to look before I cross over to the spikes because I can see them at a distance. Uh -huh. But once I'm up close, I'm, I can't see them. Uh -huh. It's weird. It's a, <laughs> but it's, like I said, when I first saw the show, it's magical. How are they doing all that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cool but challenging. It's keeping you on your toes. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and challenges. The chairs. Yeah. I love it. And walking on the chairs. That scared me. We walk, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, Diane and I walk across these chairs. That's right. uh, yeah. You gotta gotta make sure you step on the chair, uh -huh. <laughs> and not like <laughs> off the side of it. Yeah, that should exactly. Be exactly. That would be yeah. good. Oh, mm. gosh. Well, I'm glad that you're landing on the chairs. <laughs> Me too. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Jim. Thank you, Paul. Everyone, my pleasure. Everyone, go come from away. I mean, have you not seen it? There are theater it. people who still come see it. Who haven't seen it? I say no. I well. Don't. No, please Good. Come go see, see it. it. I want to go see it again. I'm going to come see you, and oh, I'm going to watch you and see you looking across the stage at your spikes. At my the... spikes <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for singing merrily to me all the time. Oh, well. And uh, Caitlin, why Caitlin. don't you take us out? Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Genevieve Angelson of the off-Broadway show The Cake.